Good evening. Hope everybody's had a good week so far and and uh, enjoying uh, every day with the Lord. You know, uh, sometimes we get called up and we need to take a little bit of breath and just realize how God, how good God has been to us and. You know, that's, uh, as I've thought about it, tonight we're going to look at uh, favor. Uh, it's yours to have, and it's yours to achieve. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people don't realize that uh, uh, if you, you, you have the opportunity to create favor with God and with uh, mankind. And it's up, on, up to you as to how you do it. Uh, favor can turn tragedy into triumph uh, within just a matter of moments. Uh, Jesus, matter of fact, if you look in uh, Luke chapter 2, and uh, uh, this was when he was just a, a young boy and uh, had uh, he's 12 years old at the time and that's when they uh, Mary and Joseph had went back to uh, pay their taxes and they didn't realize that Jesus had stayed there while they were journeying back to their home. And it was a couple days before they realized, hey, where is Jesus? Can you imagine saying, God, we lost your son? And, you know, that's looking at it on the comical side. But they went back and they found Jesus in the temple, and uh, uh, he was just astonishing the the priest and everything, and uh, but he went home. He went back when Mary and, uh, told him to come on. He went with him, and in verse fifty-two of Luke chapter two, it says, "And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man." Now, if Jesus could do that. We can do that also. And that's why, you know, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what your past has been. What's important is right now. Your very present is what prepares you for your future. And if you are willing uh, to to let God work with you, then it's yet to be told what God can do for you, through you, with you, and by you. Uh, now, let's go to our main text. Now, I want us to go to Judges chapter 6. And this is probably one of my... Uh, I, I look at Gideon as if I'd look at myself because uh, I was often... A reference to being the black sheep of the family when I was uh, in my uh, prodigal years, uh, teenage and early 20s. And uh, because uh, Gideon uh, didn't feel like it, he was ever going to amount to anything. So, Let's look in Judges chapter 6 and start with verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thy mighty man of valor. Now that's very important. The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Because look at Gideon's response in verse 13. 
And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Where be all the mar his miracles which our fathers told us of? Saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Now, when the angel of the Lord confronted Gideon, they were threshing the barley grain uh, in a wine press. They were having to do it out of sight because they were afraid that the Midianites would come and take what little they had. And, uh, and so, let's read a little bit farther, verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. In other words, as I said, Gideon looked at himself as being the black sheep of the black sheep. They were the poorest of the poor. And yet, how did God look at him? As a mighty man of valor. You see, a lot of times, we can have a negative look at our our own life because of our background, because of our past history, and fail to understand that God has our future, and that if we will do what God wants, we'll have favor with God and with man. Uh, so, in a matter of fact, in just a short period of time, Gideon went from being the least of his family to being the leader in uh, Israel to fight a war against the Midianites. And I'll guarantee that they was a nobody that would have bet anything that Gideon was worthy or could ever do something like it. You see, a lot of times we don't know what God's got planned for our tomorrow. Uh, we try, you know, a lot of times the average person just tries to go through from day to day. Uh, it's, it's just like if I talk to people that's getting ready or, or planning on getting married or something like that. I asked, what's your five-year plan? What's your 10-year plan? What's your 15-year plan? Where do you see yourself from right now to, to then? Do you see yourself just barely getting by? Do you see yourself uh, just coasting or what? And see, that's like with God. There is no coasting with God. We've got to be busy about the Lord's business. Now, favor can accelerate your excitement and your destiny. Um, it's just like Joseph. As a young boy, he had a dream. He told the dream, shared it with the family, and instead of the family being excited about it, made him mad, except his daddy. And and first one thing led to another. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. They sold him to uh, slave traders, and slave traders took him from Israel to Egypt. And he ended up being a, a servant to Potiphar. And then Potiphar's wife, she uh, got a lusting after Joseph, and Joseph refused to... Uh, have a, a sexual relationship with her and ended up being put in prison, falsely accused of something he didn't do because he was trying to keep integrity in his life. As he said, why should I sin against 
God and against uh, Potiphar. And so he went to prison. He spent life or, or quite a few years there in prison. And then he was a dreamer. And it's like the dream that he had when he was a young kid back at home that upset his brothers ended up coming to life, coming into reality later on. Uh, Pharaoh had a dream. Nobody could interpret the dream. And the butler remembered that Joseph had interpreted a dream about the butler being executed and him being restored as cupbearer to Pharaoh. And he told Pharaoh, he said, I know somebody that can interpret that. And so they bring Joseph out of the prison. They cleaned him up, made him presentable. He goes before Pharaoh and he said, well, if the Lord's will and I'll interpret this. And uh, then he told Pharaoh what the interpretation of the dream was. That there's going to be seven years of prosperity. Everything's going to uh, uh, prosper. The grain, the the harvest, the cattle, etc. But then they's going to have seven years of famine. And uh, and Pharaoh was so impressed that he made Joseph vice president over Egypt. There was nobody, the only one that was over Pharaoh, or over Joseph was Pharaoh himself. See, Joseph, because of his actions, he had favor when he was in prison. Now he had favor with Pharaoh. And then lo and behold, after the seven years of prosperity, what happens? Here comes his brothers, the very ones that had betrayed him. And Joseph was able to get all of his family reconnected, didn't hold no grudge. He said, what y'all thought to do is evil, God had a plan. You see, that's what we got to understand, that if we will follow with God, if we will be willing and obedient. Isaiah one uh, chapter one verse eighteen says, "If we be, you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land." In other words, you're going to have favor. You'll have favor with God. You'll have favor with man. And because of Joseph's actions, he had favor, and it ended up saving his family. Even the very ones that had betrayed him, he saved them. Ruth is another good example. She married a Hebrew, and he died. And uh, uh, her mother-in-law, Naomi, uh, her husband died, and her other son died. And she decided, I'm going back to Israel where I've got family. And she told Ruth and her other daughter-in-law, said, y'all do what you want to do. You stay here. You go on with your lives, whatever. But I'm going back to where I've got family. And Ruth said, wherever you go, I'm going to go. And went back. And she went into the fields picking up the little grains of the wheat harvest so that they could survive. And Naomi had told her, said, uh, go over here to this man's field. And Boaz was a wealthy man. The next thing he knew, because of Ruth, willingness, her willingness to do whatever to take care of her mother-in-law and herself created favor with God and with man. 
And Boaz, he started telling, he asked about her. So, hmm. He said, y'all leave some extra grain for her so that she can pick up and have plenty. You see, that's what we don't we fail to understand a lot of times. If we're doing the right things the right way, we won't have to ask for nothing because God will bless us. He will do it supernaturally. And he uses people to do it. I mean, you know, uh, that's why we, uh, favor is not an accident, um, but a deliberate design by God to reward you for acts of obedience that can be invisible to other people. Other people may not see it, but you'll know it. And God will reward you for it because you'll have favor with him. He will make you have favor with mankind. You know, the favor of God will always create favor with men. Uh, God's respect for Abraham, that gave him favor with kings. And... Uh, you know, we have to sometimes stop and think, am I, what I'm doing, is it creating favor? Because, you know, it's just like how you treat somebody, how you talk to somebody can create favor. Uh, you can uh, create favor or you can lose favor. And that's why we, uh, as it says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, so shall he reap. So if we learn to sow the right things, then we're going to reap good things. It's just like King Saul lost favor with God and with man. While David, on the other hand, increased favor with God and with men. And David was not perfect. David had his mistakes and mess-ups and all that. And yet, the only one that God says was man after his own heart. See, we have to learn to watch our P's and Q's, dot our I's and cross our T's, so that we're doing and putting ourselves in the position so that we have favor with God and with man. Um, I know that we live in a time where uh, everybody talks about jobs, and yeah, I know people that uh, uh, complain about they put in applications and they can't get a job. I know companies that need people, and there again, sometimes they're needing people that has uh, knowledge of what the job requires, because sometimes they may not be able to train somebody, like, uh, you know, to do a specific thing. And that's why when we learn to apply ourselves to the best, uh, a good example would be back in uh, 2000, when uh, uh, the company I worked for, I had come in and I was driving truck in and I had some things I had to do that afternoon. And while I was taking care of some business, I get a phone call from my wife said, guess what? Your uncle just came in here and said they closed the doors where you work, gave everybody 15 minutes to get out. You know what's going on? I said, no, I don't. So I just stop what I'm doing, go back out to the company, and... I 
work from November till July for a company that didn't exist. And then finally in July, they said, well, that's it. I'd hauled everything that all the companies of that group had, from Monticello, Kentucky, from Alcoa, Tennessee, from Brooknell, Gladys, Lynchburg, and Galax. I'd hauled everything up, up north, uh, above Philadelphia to Bristol. And the day that they told me that was, that was it. I made one phone call, and they said, when can you start? And I happened to have a funeral that I had to do, and I said, well, I'll come up the following day. And they said, that'll be fine. And I mean, it's just like that. I didn't have to go through any uh, hard research or anything, just one phone call to one company and got hired immediately. I look at it, that was God's favor. God's favor with me and God's favor with man. Um, you know, we can, it's up to us to decide how far we'll go with God. Gideon could have very well said to the angel of the Lord or to the Lord, because sometimes it uses Lord, and like in verse 14, And the Lord looked on him and said, Go in thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And Gideon could very well say, No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And not done it. He would have lost favor with God. But instead, he... I think Gideon's mind was going, you know, if this is God, then I can do all things when God is backing me. See, that's like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. And that's when we have to realize that the favor of God will help us to exceed and to excel in a messed up world. And I think that's one of the things that Christians need a good revelation of in this day and time, is that we, as Christians, should be excelling in whatever we're doing, because as the Word tells us, whatsoever you do, do as unto the Lord. We should be succeeding. We should be successful. Doesn't matter what our past was. Don't let your history be repetitive. Change it. Build favor with God. And as you build favor with God, then you'll build favor with man. And then you won't never be lacking in anything. That's why, you know, uh, the favor with God will always create favor with man. Uh, let me look one more verse here in the book of Acts. Uh, I think the second chapter. Let's see if I can find it right quick on it. Yeah, the, the apostles uh, they were preaching and ministering in uh, chapter 2, and in verse 41, uh, they, they gladly received this word, were baptized the same day. There were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And then, I mean, you read all that in between, and look at verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily at such as should be saved. Wow. 
God poured so much favor on Peter and the apostles that they were winning souls. Lives were being changed. And the church was increasing at a large rate. That's favor. That's what I'd like to see going on now. And the time we're living in now, it's hard to get people. Well, I've heard all that religious stuff. I don't want nothing to do with religion. Well, it's not religion. It's a life. You see, when you accept Jesus Christ for what he's done, then you become a new creature with a new feature and a new future. And you, you're not the old person. So that old person is supposed to be dead. And we're supposed to be like Jesus. And we have to do that. We have to learn. There's that transforming the way we think, the way we act, the way we talk, the way we walk, everything. And as we do that, then we will increase in wisdom, we'll increase in knowledge, we'll increase in favor with God and man. And as, uh, as uh, the saying goes, try it. You will like it. There's no might to it. And so i just give you something brief today to think about. How is your favor with God? It should be overflowing. And it's just like with all this COVID over the, over the past two years, I've been blessed more than the past 10 years. And God is just so good. And with that said, I want to see God changing people's lives. I want see God's not a respecter of persons. What he does for one, he'll do for the other. And so we've got a we've got a grasp on. And we've got that's why the closer we get to God, the more favor we're going to have with him and the more favor we'll have with other people. Get that in your mind. Not your past. Let go of the past. Drop it. And reach for the things of God. So I hope this has encouraged you today to never give up. Don't get down. Don't get out. But get up. Get ready, because God is about to increase in your life if you're willing to let him. As always, I know this is an opportunity for people to uh, rededicate their life to the Lord. It's also an opportunity, if you've never been saved, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And today can be the greatest day of your life. Uh, there's nothing no sadder than seeing people falling from God. Because when they do, they start losing favor. And, uh, and God wants favor to be upon his children. He wants you to be blessed. So let's just pray this simple prayer. If you believe it in your heart, confess your mouth. Today can be your turning point. So, Father God, I just come to you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Forgive me of all my sins, my faults, my failures. And Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit that from this day on, I can increase favor with you, Lord. And as I do with you, you're going to enlarge my territory. And Lord, help me to be a winner of souls. Help me to serve you, give you honor and glory. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, if you prayed that, get ready. Because God will start working in your life 
on his behalf because you are his workmanship created unto good works for Jesus Christ. And so, uh, as always, we invite you to come join us Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock at Mountain Harvest Church out here on uh, Waterfield Road. We're right at the intersection of Greenville Road and Waterfield. We're just a mile off the four lane, West Galax, there at the Caution Line. And uh, love to have you come and be part of the family. And look forward to tomorrow evening at 6.30. Also, I uh, will be uploading this on YouTube. And uh, so uh, share the word, spread the news, and may God bless you. Have a great night and a great tomorrow. And I'll see you tomorrow evening, same time, same place. God bless.